All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about how to set up a course, how to configure it, what the settings are, and what that looks like. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so first things first, you go to the membership site where you want to add the course. Now, you can add the course to two different places. You could add your course to your main marketing website, or you could add it to a membership site. I recommend if you're going to be selling your course to add the course to your membership site. The reason is because then you can more easily control access to it. It doesn't need to be part of like a membership or anything like that. You could just use the membership site for the course or courses, but that way you can actually drip out access to the course based on what they purchased versus on the marketing website. It's a lot harder to control access to it because it's a public site. Okay, so that's the first thing. Usually it's best practice to put your course on a membership site. So when you're adding a course, go ahead and go to the courses tab of the membership site. So you go to content membership site, click into the membership site and click on the courses tab. Then click create new course right here. And that's how you can create your new one. So you can give it a title, an internal name. You can add a link to this course on your site's menu bar. Um, give it a description here. Now, this description is going to show up at the top of the page, but it's only going to show up for people who have access to the course. So people who can see the course because they have access to it will see this message. Um, for published state, you know, you get to pick draft mode means that no one can see it unless they're an admin. So they need to actually have access to your account. Published obviously is pretty straightforward. It means, well, published means that anyone who has access to the membership site can see this course. So if you set something to published, it's not going to be possible to drip out access to it based on a certain product they bought, for example. If something is published, everyone on the site will see it no matter what they purchased. If, they, if you want it to be that only certain people will see it based on what they should get access to, then you would make this dripped. So you'd switch the course to dripped. And that means then that you can actually give access to this course to specific members who purchase the course uh, from a specific product or they register, they sign up for a free course on the list, etc. But this is how you can actually um, restrict access to the course based on what they registered for. And then schedule um, just decides, you know, you can publish it at a certain date in the future. For the catalog description, this shows up in the course catalog section of the membership site. So you can give it a little description here and you can add an image here. Um, if you were to use the course catalog session section, then it would show up there. And here you can see under presentation, you get to decide um, if you want to have a background image for the front page of the course overview. And then for the lessons, each lesson lesson can have its own default uh, card image. And I'll show you what that looks like of where it shows up. Each lesson can have its own one. Um, but you can also give a default card image for all lessons right here that will just show up for each one. Um, and then you can say whether you want to show the author of the lesson or of the course, uh, when the lesson was updated, show only lessons and ignore the modules. So there's a little bit of extra configuration you can do there. So the preview section is for people who don't have access to the course. So let's say you've got people who purchased a certain product. So they got access to one course in the membership site, but then you have this whole other course on the same membership site that they would have to purchase a different product to be able to access. So you could set that other course to preview, which means that they could click into the course, but they wouldn't actually be able to access any of the lessons. They would only be able to see the course in preview mode. Okay. So it's a nice little marketing trick. Um, however, for preview mode, we have some options, right? So you get to decide. You could say nothing. You could say that the course is just hidden completely and no one's able to see it um, if they don't have access. Or you could say preview only the list of lessons selected for preview. So you can create, you can make one of the lessons actually accessible and watchable so they can watch the video in the lesson, etc. And that would be a preview lesson. Or you can give, you can show the full outline of the course. It will list all the modules and lessons, but they'll be locked. Okay. And then you can add a message here for people who don't have access yet. And we'll show this instead of the course description when they don't have access to the course. And you can actually add a label for a button and then add um, the link to the order form for the product for that course so that people who don't have access can purchase by clicking that button. 
And then we've got some other settings here um, that you can go through. You know, you can allow the course participants to mark each lesson as completed. You can require each lesson to be completed before they can go to the next one. So it will unlock each lesson as you complete them. You can let the users leave private notes that are only visible to the user. So you won't be able to see those and other users won't be able to see them. Um, you can remove the download links from videos, audios, and PDFs within just this course. Um, and you can allow participants to consume your course as a podcast. And then down here, you can allow course lessons or make it so that they need to be moderated and then don't allow comments at all. So um, now I want to show you the other settings. So let's go into a course that's already been created here. So this gear icon is where you can access a lot of what we just looked at, a lot of those settings. There's a couple other settings that you can see. So let me show you down here. Oh, sorry, the other one is the certificate. So if you have this available on your plan, you can also award a certificate now to people who complete all of the lessons in the course. You can edit the names, you can edit the title, um, you can edit a lot of this, and then you can also send an email notification to those people when they complete all the lessons that congratulates them on completing the course. Okay, so that's the settings. Now, to actually create the course, um, what you would do, you can see in here that there have been some modules and lessons created. So lessons are where you actually add the content, right? So you're gonna add the videos and the worksheets and the body text all goes in a lesson. The lessons need to live inside of a module. So you get to decide what the module titles are and what the lessons are in each module. And you get to decide how many lessons you want in each module. The way it works is you add a module down here, give it a title and a description, and then you can decide on the color and then uh, decide on the status and create it. And then once you've created a module, then you can click you can uh, add a lesson so you would click add lesson right here and that creates a new lesson um and then within the lessons themselves so let's say once you've created the module and you added the lesson now you need to edit the lesson so here you can change the state of the lesson itself um you can give it uh, a title and then you can add a featured image and the text content for the lesson right here um, I want to show you on a new lesson what it would look like. So let me go into this one. So for the content, it doesn't have to be that you add an image here. Um, you know, you can add anything that you want. So you can make the main piece of content a video. It could be an audio. It could be a quiz. It could be a worksheet. Um, it could be, or it could be an image or whatever you want. And then the text would go here. So this is just the main type of content that the lesson uh, consists of. And the text for the lesson goes here. Now, if you want to add additional content, let's say the video is up here, you've got some body text, and then you want to add a worksheet and a PDF. You can add those here. So add media file would be for anything like PDF, videos, audios, etc. And then add a worksheet would be to add a worksheet. And you can add as much additional content as you would like. Um, and then here, for people who don't have access to this course, do you want them to see the title only of the lesson? Or do you want them to actually access this lesson as a preview lesson, which means you would choose content? Okay, so that's how that works. Um, down here, you can track multiple completions. So if you hover over this question mark, you'll see that like for workouts, meditations, other types of content that people consume multiple times. You can track how many times that they consume it here. And you can add a trigger to the lessons if you would like right there. So that is how you can add a lesson and a module. Um, that's pretty much a very high level overview. This is kind of what that what those modules would look like. You can see here we've got the module here, mindset, mindset, um, all the lessons are inside of it. This is where the thumbnails go. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much how that works. To add a specific thumbnail to a lesson, that's right here at the top of the page. So you choose custom thumbnail and put that here. So this is if you want a specific thumbnail for this lesson. And then that we have some recommended dimensions. Now the other thing I want to make sure that's clear is the state of the lessons and the modules. So right now, all of these are published, except for some of these are in draft mode. Um, so the course itself 
needs to be set to dripped if you're going to be giving access to it based on purchasing a product or signing up to a list, right? So if only specific people in the membership site need access to a specific course, the course would be set to dripped. Now inside the course, you can, you can add the modules. For example, let's say you want them to just get access to everything the moment that they sign up for the course. So the course would be set to dripped. Let's say they purchase the product, they get access to the course. Now, when they log in, you would make sure all of these modules and lessons are set to published. Okay. So the reason for that is because they get access to the course and then everything inside of it is set to publish so they can see everything once they get access. If the modules and lessons are set to published, but the course is set to dripped mode, then people who don't have access to the course will not see the inside of it. So just because it says published doesn't mean that people outside of the course can get access to it. It's still only going to be accessible to people who have, who receive access to it if the course is set to dripped. So keep that in mind. So if you set it to dripped and then you make everything published, they'll get access to the course from a product or wherever you connect it to, and then they'll see all the lessons. If you want, you could make the modules set to dripped, for example, and then you could actually drip out the modules by day um, after they get access to the course or by an automation, for example, here by choosing manually triggers automation, save changes, and then create an automation that drips out access to each module. Um, and there's, you know, other videos that will go into that. Um, and that automation would start when they purchase the product that gives access to this course, right? So that's how you could actually drip out the content inside of the course versus just giving them access all to it at once. Okay, and then the last thing to keep in mind too is over here, we've got these little three dots where you can see the awarded certificates here. Um, you can see who has access to the course. So here it's showing that there's two products that give access. Um, you can also duplicate or move the course. So if you want to duplicate it, you would choose the other membership site or website, wherever you want to move it to. Then if you want to move it completely, then click move. If you want to duplicate it, you would click duplicate. Okay. Um, and a question that I get a lot is whether or not the comments on the courses will move if you um, click duplicate. They will not. We don't copy the comments over. But if you move a course from one place to another, it will take all of the comments with it. So all the comments on the lessons. Um, so yeah, so that is pretty much the high level overview. Uh, the last thing would be analytics over here. So if you want to see all of the members and how many lessons they've completed, their logins, their progress, um, the completed lessons would show a check mark here. And then the lessons that have been watched but not actually completed would have an eyeball. Um, and then you could actually view the data by lesson videos as well. You know, how many views, how many, um, and then, you know, which per module as well. So this is how you can see that. You can also switch it to by lesson. So you would show each lesson and it would show how many views, who's completed it, the members who viewed it, um, et cetera. So that is that. Um, yeah. So go ahead and try out creating a course. Hopefully this helped. Um, and good luck uh, because it's a lot of fun.